One of my biggest pet peeves as far as the music industry is concerned, there's a lot of shit, you know, a lot of a lot a lot of the infrastructural shit of just obviously how labels work, taking people's money, you know, taking advantage of young kids, um, getting them in shitty deals, you know, like all that stuff. But you've heard all that stuff, like just go watch any Russ interview, you know, like salute to Russ. He's like that, you know, you've heard that stuff. There's a lot of stuff I could list. For me, the biggest issue I have with the music industry that just sticks out in my head that just really irks me, like um, outside of outside of just the fucked up institutions of it, but that's just capitalism, so that's a whole other conversation, is like how much of like a fucking cool guys club this shit is. Like you don't realize till you start to see it under the hood of like people make it seem like it's about actual like numbers or it's about this or it's about that a lot of it is just people with like shallow egos that are just going that just want to be a part of like a cool club and then whoever becomes like cool and becomes like a form of social capital to that group you know what i'm saying then gets popping and it's not even based on like even because even in like some of the world's that where it's supposed to be more like culture based it just becomes very uh like this weird popularity contest but the popularity is based on fragile ego shit so that's like super vague but the my biggest issue with with the music industry or with the hip with the hip hop like game is just that it's not uh objective you know, and all art is subjective, like, so that's a given. But the lack of objectivity is like, no conversation is around, we don't have conversations enough that are just about art and about the music. And I understand more now that it like has to do, like your persona and how you deliver the music and who you are to people matters. I feel like across the board, it's just like there aren't enough conversations that are solely about the music. It's all about like people are just having FOMO. And so there's just this overconsumption of everything. That was really vague. Like I just used a lot of like random work because this is something I think about a lot. Like I could sit here and talk for two hours and give you a bunch of examples. It's really hard to like synthesize. But um, I'm just over the cool guy shit. Like I just want to make great art and I just want to make my money off my off my art and do my thing and be independent and I answer to no company and no institution that I don't fuck with. And I want to share music with people that it helps them. And I want to be respected for the skills that I have. And I don't give a fuck no more about like motherfuckers letting me into some cool guy club because the whole thing is just fake. Like once you get in, you realize that it's all just like a bunch of people standing around, like 40 people standing on a stage trying to like feel like they're part of something, but they're not even listening to the music. Like, no, you know, you, that's a big, that, that's probably the metaphor for the hip, for like the music industry as I see it in hip hop. It's like, you know, the music sucks from the side of the stage, right? Like you can't hear it. You know what I'm saying? It sounds terrible, but everybody want to be over there. For what? So like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, this is metaphorically speaking, you feel me? And that's how I feel about the whole game. It's like, man, Go out in the crowd and hear it and let it make you feel something and then be objective and then respond with your money and with your time and with your cred credibility that you give to people through whatever platform that you have based on how something honestly made you feel. Not because it made you feel like you were on the side of the stage and you were like a part of something that was better than somebody else. To be clear, it's like people that are just fans of stuff like that's what you are, you're a fan. I think what's disappointing about the industry is when you get in and you see how people that are supposed to be like upholders of the culture or of the quote unquote industry just are grown up professional, like, like, I don't even want to say fans because it's not about their fandom, but it's just all about maintaining their spot in the cool circle. So shit will get whack and they won't even call anything whack and there's just a lot of double standards for like what gets accepted and what doesn't and what's tolerable and what's not because then people don't want to be seen as haters in the industry like everyone's just punching a clock trying to like do their job and i respect it but then they act like they're doing more than that it's like you got to have the balls to, to to actually do more than that if you want to act like that because like 
you know, look, I walk around with a lot of privilege just in life in America and just in general and everything I've ever done. But I've also busted my ass, made a lot of decisions about things I'm not willing to sacrifice and my integrity to do things the way that I'm doing them right now. I'm taking a long, slow road because I love this shit. It means something to me. So if you're in the music industry and you want to claim that type of love and you want to claim that type of integrity, like you don't get to do that. If you're just going to not be honest and just go along with whatever cool bullshit is because you're afraid to be on the outside of the cool circle, you make excuses for a bunch of problematic shit, I'm not with that. You know what I'm saying? I think what's important about not compromising is staying true to yourself. And I'm a, I'm a young, like, I'm not that old of a guy, but I think what the important part about that is just like, look at where people are in their later stages of life, like a little bit later, like not this year, like in five years and 10 years. I think if you don't compromise as much on your integrity and your core values and things that matter to you and you become the type of person you want to be, I think you'll live a lot happier life. I think the people that compromise and that like, get a lot of notoriety really quickly or a lot of money, they don't look very happy to me later. And I, and that's not appealing to me. Like, I don't wanna be, um, I, I, I'm trying to get better, like, you know, every every five years as a, as a man, like as a human and enjoying my life more and being a more fulfilled person. So that shit just doesn't look fulfilling. So I think it's about like seeing things beyond like next week, you know, seeing things beyond this year and like doing what feels true to you. Cause at the end of the day, you know, I, when I first got into rap, they used to say like, we really think you can have like, you know, 10 year career if you like really do this, you could have 10. And they used to say it like, as if it was long. I'm like, what, when I'm 30 something, I'm gonna be dead? Like, what, you know what I'm saying? Like 10 years, like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a person that loves this and that's in this, like I'm trying to think about who I'm trying to become as a man, as an artist for a long time. So I think that's why people should, you know, prioritize what makes you feel good about yourself as a person, like deep down and not just what makes other people put you on a pedestal real quickly, you know? If I could give somebody advice that wants to come into the, the hip hop world and the hip hop industry. Well, the one thing I always tell people or like younger rappers and stuff is like, you have to find what makes you, you and only you, you know? Like, there's a million people that can rap. There's a million people that make songs. There's a million people doing this, doing that. Like, what's the thing that makes someone say, I feel a certain way that I need to listen to a Marlon Kraft record today? Not just like a, I wanna hear some body that can rap and I let me shuffle the playlist. You know, it's like, what makes you essential to somebody like, and essentially that advice is like, find your voice. You know, that's what, that's all I was really trying to say. As I've gotten older, I've understood that like, finding your voice isn't just about that. It's about like finding your voice in the world and who you want to be in the world. So that's my advice because I'm still finding my voice. I have a lot better grasp on it than I did seven, eight years ago. And I hope that in seven, eight years from now, I have an even more grasp, better grasp on it, but it matters how you feel. Don't get in here and start doing shit that makes you feel all icky and shit. It's like, if you feel nasty about the shit, probably is nasty. Like it matters how you feel. It will matter in the long run. You can do it in a way where you can win how you want to win and you can still feel good about yourself and feel good about what you're doing. And just like, think about what you really want. And what are the things that just your ego wants to feel like you're succeeding? But what do you really want what's really important to you?